the US Capitol under attack. This is the moment a mob of Donald Trump supporters stormed what should be one of the most secure buildings in the country. Throngs pushed past police who were caught off guard and overwhelmed. Rioters managed to temporarily stop Joe Biden's election win being certified by Congress. And it will stand in recess until the call of the chair. We'll pause. Protesters are in the building. Thank you. It started when Trump riled a rally with his baseless claims of election fraud. Right here, we're going to walk down to the Capitol because you'll never take back our country with weakness. You have to show strength and you have to be strong. They heeded his call. Rioters ran free, taking over the chambers and occupying offices of the nation's leaders. There were armed standoffs, but only one deadly shot was fired. At this hour, our democracy is under an unprecedented assault. Unlike anything we've seen in modern times. It's not protest, it's insurrection. The president-elect called on the president to ask his supporters to stand down. Trump did, but repeated the lies fueling the unrest. This was a fraudulent election, but we can't play into the hands of these people. We have to have peace. So go home. We love you. You're very special. You've seen what happens. You see the way others are treated that are so bad and so evil. I know how you feel, but go home and go home in peace. As a curfew kicked in, the police, National Guard, FBI and Secret Service slowly took back control of the capital. It was violent, chaotic, but only about 50 people were arrested. Today, a shameful assault was made on our democracy. It cannot, however, deter us from our responsibility to validate the election of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Inside the now calm capital, there's widespread repudiation for the attempted coup. Some Republicans have withdrawn their election challenges, but many pundits say that with the president, they bear responsibility for the riot. That those inside and outside the Capitol building were working with the same purpose, to override the will of the voters. Liz Maddock, TRT World. I'm joined now by Jason Nichols in Ellicott City, Maryland. He's a democratic strategist and professor of African-American studies at the University of Maryland. Also joining us is Adolfo Franco in Washington. He's a Republican strategist and former aide to presidential candidate John McCain. Welcome to the program to both of you. Jason, if I could start with you uh, first. Extraordinary scenes at the US Capitol, to say the least. I don't think many people could have imagined that it could have ever got to that point. But were the signs there? Was it just a matter of time, given the, the rhetoric that President Donald Trump continued to espouse during his time in office? Absolutely. I, I think we should have expected this, honestly. We saw it in Charlottesville in 2017. And we saw it recently in Michigan with Governor uh, Gretchen Whitmer and other members of uh, the legislature in Michigan. We saw these kinds of scenes, and that was only a precursor and a warning to how this was going to explode. For a long time, I've been saying that Donald Trump was not going to accept the results of this election. And everyone said I was overreacting. People said others were overreacting when they said that, that they were being alarmist. And here we are at the point where we had a full-scale insurrection. We had four deaths. We had people who were hiding under desks in our, uh, in our capital, something that you only see usually in the developing world. And so we have no right as Americans to ever, at this point, look down upon the developing world when these kinds of things happen, when they're happening right in our country, and we let someone who is trying to behave like a two-bit dictator that uh, take over this country, rile up people to commit seditious acts. It is an embarrassment. I'm hurt as an American, as I'm sure uh, my counterpart is as well. 
Adolfo, what's your reaction to what happened? We know many Republicans who once supported Trump are now disowning him, but they did help him to get to where he is in the first place. They also supported him throughout his four years as president. Do they bear some responsibility for what happened in the Capitol? I don't think so. Uh, but I am horrified about uh, what has happened, and it is uh, not only deplorable, it is this, one of the saddest days in American history. There's no question about it. I, I worked in the House, and every time I went on that House chamber, uh, I was moved, and I was on there many, many times. It's hallow ground to me. Uh, this group does not represent, these rioters do not represent the vast majority of the 74 million people who supported uh, President Trump. It's just, or not, nor does it uh, reflect President Trump's views as well. This is a violent mob. This was wholly un unacceptable. The question is, I, I suppose, is, is how this happened. And there is, when this situation passes and, and it becomes a little more of an analytical period, we'll see the feelings of people for the last four years, how they were pent up on this. We'll see that Frankly, unfortunately, uh, the courts have really never adjudicated on, on this matter. And lastly, the procedures that were being undertaken in the, in the Congress are the same objections that Democrats raised in 2001, 2005, and 2017. They objected to the results uh, of the elections uh, at that time. Uh, what is unacceptable is for a mob to come in and try to do, and my colleague is right, uh, uh, an insurrection. That is not reflect the president's views. They don't reflect the views of Republicans, and they don't reflect the views of Trump supporters. This is no different than the rioting that took place in the spring uh, when they were trying to burn the courthouse in Portland, Antifa, and leftists during the Black Lives Movement okay. uh, demonstrations. Again, at that time, people were saying this was a small minority. This is the same situation we see here. Okay, Adolfo, I, I just want to put aside those allegations of electoral fraud because they have been put to bed uh, for now at least. Now, Jason, almost immediately people compared the lack of law enforcement that allowed the rioters to storm the building in the first place to the heavy police presence that greeted largely peaceful Black Lives Matter protesters uh, last year. How do you explain that? What explains that stark contrast? Well, I don't, I don't think it can be explained. I, I think what we saw in many cities, going back to 2015 in Ferguson, where people I know, friends of mine, who were there protesting peacefully, were hit with tanks. Well, they had tanks and tear gas. We saw even members of the media, even some of your colleagues at TRT, were hit with tear gas uh, when the president walked across the street for a photo op. This is who this president is. And, and, you know, with all due respect to Mr. Franco, I, I have to disagree. This is something that the president called for. He is somebody who went out in front of, the, uh, of large numbers of Americans and got them hyped up for something that we know is false. In every state and every, uh, even some Trump appointed judges have said that this is nonsense. And this is something that is causing an insurrection in our country. An insurrection in our country is not the same as an uprising in some random city uh, over, you know, racial injustice. There was no injustice done here. It was an American election. It was the most secure election, according to Chris Krebs, who was uh, part of the Trump administration, head of uh, cybersecurity. It was the most secure election in our history. And simply because this man lost, he goes up and he riles up an audience to go and rush the Capitol. I agree with Mr. Franco that that is hollow ground. I've been in the rotunda. I've been in those places. And it is something that is so fundamental to American democracy. And to sit there and try to make this false equivalency is frustrating, you know, as an American, to listen to my American counterpart say this. Yes. I'm afraid well, we are running out of time, but Adolfo, I just want well, to address one last issue. Now, there are reports that some members of Donald Trump's cabinet have been discussing the invoking of the 25th Amendment in order to remove the president from office. That would need the support of Vice President Mike Pence and a majority of the cabinet, and this measure is used to remove a president that's unfit 
from office. Do you think this needs to happen and will it happen? First of all, that would be the worst thing that could happen. It would really bring the country again into a chaotic situation and it's not happening. This is just absolutely rumors and, and talks. And I think it's irresponsible to send a majority leader to suggest or minority leader Schumer to suggest the president be removed with 13 days left in his term. I think that would just cause throw gasoline in a very, very divided country. I will say lastly, I do not share your view that the uh, mostly peaceful protests that resulted in billions of dollars in damage uh, were insignificant. I think the Hatfield Federal Courthouse that, and, that protesters are trying to burn down is also hallowed ground. And I think people like Maxine Water calling for violence and calling for people to be incited into these things are equally repugnant. Here's the difference between myself and my colleague. I think all of these extremists, right or left, need to be condemned. But I think there has to be an equal and same standard applied. If not, we're going to continue to be a divided country, which we cannot afford. OK, and I'm afraid that's a whole another debate in itself. But Jason Nichols in Maryland and Adolfo Franco in Washington, thank you so much again for joining us.